Disclaimer. This podcast, its members and their thoughts and opinions are meant to entertain and be an open space for dialogue. We are human just like the rest of y'all, and a lot of what may be said is not for the pure purpose of influence, but more to give perspectives and avenues of thinking through a more lighthearted tone. Nothing stated is ever out of hate or malice with the intent to hurt or offend, as any issues or gripes will be explicitly specified. With all that being said, stay solid and enjoy the show. He's won a million dollars! What is good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Real Weaver Podcast. We in the studio this time, you know what I'm saying? At the three, I go by the name of Trey, a.k.a. your friend of the neighborhood, Trigger Man. To my left, we got my man, Karen, a.k.a. Heem, at the two. And today, we are the Real Weaver Podcast. The only podcast that's always going to be out there to remind you that it's free somewhere. You just got to keep digging. But before we dive in today, Heem, we got a quote of the day, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we do. Yep. Today's quote. Today's quote. Take it as you will. We'll discuss a little bit, talk about it, see how we feel. The quote is, fail with honor rather than succeed by fraud. That's on everything for me. Because a lot of people in today's society, I mean, not even today's society, but like all, all the way back in the day, you know, whatever by any means necessary is something that people live and die by. And people will take things to the grave, whether that's a lie, whether that's a falsehood, whatever it is. It, people say, you know, as long as I do what I need to get done, then it's all worth it. Me, personally, I let my morals get in the way of that. There are a lot of opportunities I could for sure take that I could that could advantage me in a lot of ways, but I feel like it's not right to do so because that's not within who I am as a person and not what I believe in long term and, you know, what will make me a, a full stack person, essentially. And I think, you know, when you take your L's genuinely, your dubs are going to be more genuine at the same time. Yeah. you It's the give and take, you know, uh, what Kendrick said some shit in the uh was it that Black Panther song? It was I forgot the name of it, but he said, I want the credit if I'm losing or I'm winning. That's like basically essentially what all this is about, in my opinion. So No, absolutely. You know, um I feel like a lot of people, especially um, to those of us who have been blessed enough to get to schools or whatever, especially once you get to higher education, like in college, I feel like there are C's that I'm way more proud of than I am of A's. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's a little bit different for the sake of, like, you know, I was doing both with honor like I wasn't. But, like, you know, when you're succeeding by fraud and you kind of breeze by something, you don't put a lot of effort in it. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily a fraud, but you start to feel like that when shit's a little bit too easy. When you really work for something, even if it wasn't succeeding at the highest level, you still feel a little bit more proud of what you did and what you achieved than you are when you do some other shit. True, and also, I feel like you don't respect it as much. Yeah. Like, when you when it's, like, given to you and it's easy and it's just, um, like, it's just a handout at that point, it's like, okay, like, yeah, like, if I paid off the right person or if I, if I made the right connection and it was just free like that, then sometimes the process itself is not worth it to you. You're not willing to dive into the process of how to be successful to replicate it so that, you know, that's something that you could really pass on. Because, I mean, I, I, you could pass off resources all, all day long. Yeah. But... If it's through, like, faulty means, you know, it's your prerogative at the end of the day. We're not really on that type of wave. We're on the, you know, grind it till you make it for real because you're going to have, like, some steps along the way that aren't going to be successful. Something like this, we're going to do this for a long time. Yeah. It's not going to be successful, as y'all see, through the numbers and all that. But it's not really about the numbers. It's about the message at the end of the day. And that's, I think, it was really important. So, And if you want to help make it successful, make sure you like and subscribe. Exactly. I forgot to say that, but my man is right. <laughs> Please sure. like, comment, subscribe, and comment down below. We need that engagement. So. Also, hit that noti bell so that you get notification every time that we drop a new episode. We're trying our best to stay consistent, but you know we're working on it. Yep. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. I had so, to drop that little gem in there. My fault. No, of course. But I think that sums it up for me. Absolutely. You know? That's good for me, too. Um, so, a little small recap. Um, today is the what is 15th. Today? 15th. So Super Bowl was this past Sunday. And yes, I'm a Niner fan. So y'all know how that went. Terribly. Uh we was down tremendous. Is it there was a boo button. 
it was there, laughable. It was, it, was, it was laughable. I ain't gonna lie. Pat Mahomes, shout out to you. You, you. I mean, he's a goat. Like at this point, I mean, he he needs more like rings, of course, to like really be the goat achievement wise. But like, he's the best quarterback I've ever seen. He's the best football player I've ever seen in my life. Talent wise, absolutely. Yeah, what he did. There was a point where I was telling people that I was with during the Super Bowl. I don't, I'm a, so I'm a Charger fan, so we play him twice a year. Like, I've seen what that man can do every game. And the second they gave him the ball in the fourth quarter at the end, and it was do or die for them, I just knew I, he always gets it. It was raps, yeah. It's We've had conversations before about who's the GOAT. Like, what does does certain things and certain times of a game matter more or less? I've Most of the time, I'm on the side of like, Nah, but like, what did he do during the rest of the game to put them in that position? Like, even if it didn't go right at the end, like, who was it to put him in a position? Yeah. Honestly, my thought process on that changed a lot just watching Patrick Mahomes because there is just a difference to a guy when you give him the ball and you just know hey, that that motherfucker's gonna get it. It's that competitive spirit, bro. He's not gonna lay down, bro. Yeah, it's there's nuts. no way. Like we, he could have been down by ten with like four minutes left. He he's like, he's out. thinking, oh, I'm, I can still win this. He's like, up oh, seven three, oh, and, oh, and that's yeah, why he's yeah, a fucking yeah. champion, bro. Because he never relented, he never quit it, and that's just that's the result of when you put in that hard work. Yeah, so, he might talk a lot, but guess what? He deserves to, bro. Like I don't know the workouts he puts in, and he probably doesn't show everything he, that he does, but he probably works his ass off day he in and day out. We, I mean, he doesn't have to show us what he's doing on and off the field. And I mean, I don't know if you watched the Netflix documentary, but like. Some people got to see it this year. Like, that documentary was from last year, and we got to see what it ended up with, and he got a Super Bowl last year. He probably did the same thing this year. Like, mm -hmm. he's a, uh, we, this generation is blessed to have gone from, like, every generation's been blessed to go from Michael to Kobe to Braun to go from Joe Montana to Brady to now Patrick Mahomes. Like and there was and there's been overlap for most of those people. I don't know if there was overlap from Montana to Brady, but yeah, like our generation has been blessed in sports to have once in a lifetime talents at certain positions that are really carrying the sport. So that's true. Blessed to see it. And as a 49er fan, they got us winning next year. I don't know why, but I'm gonna support y'all either way. Brock Purdy, I still believe in you. Black. I do not think it was your fault. I think it was coaching. It was it not your fault? I, I, it was coaching and game management. <laughs> Speaking of being a game manager, a game manager, we needed some late game game management that would have taken us home. Because irregardless of all the 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 punt that fucking happened, we could have still won that game, bro. I mean, regardless the, of Dre Greenlaw getting injured, we the, still, we could have still won that game. Block field goal, mm -hmm. play calling. Yep. The fumble, Christian McCaffrey's fumble in the first first half because y'all was steamrolling them. Because if that drive goes to a touchdown instead of whatever the fuck it ended up being. Oh, instead of being nothing. Yeah. That might have just been the story of the game right there, that fumble. Because he never fumbles, bro. He fumbled one time against the Cowboys, and that was it. I already fumbled. I think they said four times this year. Oh, okay. Four times he had lost a fumble this year. Okay. Because, yeah, okay. For over, sure. over seven or 19 games, 20 games after playoffs. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. But, you know, happens in the most important moment. Happens. Like I said, hey, rather, you know, fail with honor than succeed by fraud. That's all I got to say. And that's a moment of that. Because guess what? If we do the right things that we need to and prepare, like overtime situations you need to prepare for, and if we win, then it's all gravy. It's all good. But yeah. until that point, you got you to gotta bow down to the king, bro. Pat Mahomes, shout out to you. So. Shout out, Pat. Yep. And one small thing, speaking of goats, um, Kobe's statue was unveiled on uh, February 8th, Yeah. you know, to represent – him and his daughter Gigi, you know, rest in peace to them and all of the families involved in the helicopter crash. But I know a lot of people were giving flack for the statue and what it looked like. I kind of like it. I'm not gonna lie. When I first saw it, I was like, you know, because uh, Vanessa said that was the one that Kobe picked out. But I think it's a, a a great thing because I feel like every time people go to the Staples Center, yes, it's still a Staples Center, um, they finna <laughs> throw that hand up. You know, yeah. Kobe after he scored 81, which is some 2K shit, people gonna throw that that finger up. So. Yeah, I think people were just a little bit shocked of all of the moments that he's had that that was the one that was picked. Now, if Kobe picked yeah. it, like when I heard Kobe picked it, I had no qualms with it. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, I'm, so, I'm it's not the statue itself is good. Like they've done stuff. I've seen statues before where like it's a bad statue, not like 
bad posing or bad choice of pose or whatever like this was an actually like a good statue it's just like oh you might you could do or would do without the specific pose they chose but it was a great ceremony i saw it's going to be a series of a couple of more statues that they're releasing at some point too so two more i think is if i'm not mistaken one for gg and then one for 24 yeah so, so we'll I look, see i look forward to that yep so shout out kobe and all the families and yeah salute so all right and scouting report for social media i saw a video and you know I like to bring to the podcast some stuff that, you know, are topics of discussion, hot topics, things that get the people going. You know, it's provocative, but no, it's not. It just it just gets the people going. And so yeah. the video I saw this week was, and I'm sure some of you all seen it on social media, and maybe we'll add it in right here to our, to our video. We'll see if we upgrade. We'll see how good I can <laughs> get with my editing skills, but I'm just going to yeah. place it right here just in case. And it's basically, it's this girl on a podcast. She said, if you are a man and you are making less than $50,000 a year, you should not be dating. You might not like my answer to this. You agree with her? I kind of do. Okay. I'm going to be honest. Only because of expectations at the end of the day. Like, you know, that's not a true statement at all. It's I think it's based on opinion. Like, you could clearly date someone and make, you know fucking less than 50k because you got to look into are are you paying for where you're living because some people live with their parents yeah and let's say your parents are well off and you have your own little space or whatever like some people don't mind that but of course some people do mind that and i think at a baseline if you need to take care of all your necessities to live and also depends on where you're living yeah in los angeles tough, tough. in new york tough. tough florida florida tough a little tough but if you live in like you know missouri or like arkansas you, know, arkansas, you feel me you might you might get your shit off with that yeah but i kind of agree because i think as a man you know you know our money is her money too at a certain point bro like it's not just our shit yeah and girls don't you know you gotta come correct bro you can't just be bullshitting absolutely i've been a bullshitter before We've so, all been there. I was a little nigga though, so you feel me? I'm, I'm better now. So I think my biggest gripe with the video came with it, it being such a blanket statement. Like I feel like it's a little like let's just let's just go over statistics. Like okay, I get it. What she's saying not entirely incorrect. Where she's coming from, I understand. And if that's what you're looking for, then by all means, no one's judging you. But to make a blanket statement and say that. Like, you should not be dating at $50,000. Like, the average individual income in America is barely $50,000. Yeah, I think, I think it's less than that. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. average. That's the average person. So we're so are we supposed to start saying to other humans that the average person is not supposed to find love and date? Hey. Like, that's that's my qualm with hey. it. Like, what are we talking about? I remember being in middle school, and nigga, we was, we was religiously playing this song. This nigga said, bitch, you broke. Shut, Shut up. up. Don't, Don't talk, talk to me. me. Hey, get your better. Hey. It's one of them situations. But um, that's just how girls, some girls are looking at the, the world now in regards to men. Like, I think. I mean, girl or not, I feel like anyone that makes that statement, especially if you're an influencer. Now, I've no, I know nothing about this girl. But, like, I feel like at some point you have to recognize that if you have a platform. Like, we recognize that our platform might not be big, but we do post and there might be people who see this down the line. So we have a responsibility to make sure that when we're discussing stuff, that we're discussing stuff properly. Yeah. For her to come on and make a blanket statement like that, it's just, I feel like it's just like, it just rubbed me the wrong way. She might be echoing a sentiment that a certain sect of girls, you know, for sure feel. Like, some girls are like, if you can't take me to certain restaurants or certain vacation spots then why am i even fucking with you type of thing but, but what's what isn't there like that the what's it called that they do um what's the podcast with myram myram Miriam? oh it's talking about uh the delusion calculator whatever that was fresh and fit fresh and fit they have that delusion calculator <laughs> yeah i first bro i hate that like i don't subscribe to the all the thoughts of that podcast like they bring out like good ideas every once in a while but for the most part like i don't subscribe to that yeah but bro that delusion calculator is so fucking funny it's it's all statistics bro, bro. it's so funny and like 
yeah I, when you start really putting it in like statistically what some of these people are asking for and i get it if you're a oh point oh 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 one percent girl then okay cool you can go look for a point oh 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 one percent boy like no one gives a fuck but like <laughs> i was gonna ask you like if you're a what what constitutes girl what, like, what constitutes a point oh 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 one percent girl that, in your opinion <laughs> You want to skip? <laughs> you can plead the fifth, okay. bro. Like that's what we I'm pleading the fifth in twenty twenty four, bro. And like there are people, and this is you know this is a question, and we should have. I think we should have this discussion when we bring a girl on the podcast at some point. The discussion should be, and I don't. I'm not going to linger on this topic because it's not my place to speak for it. But I'm truly curious about answering that question. Like, what makes a girl a point oh 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 one percent? Girl, like, what are those standards? I think in a dating sense, we can answer that. But in a self, like, you know, self sense, we can't answer that. Because I mean, yeah, we can't like, determine someone's value innately within themselves and how they view themselves. But if you want to say what makes me a 0.11 or whatever, 0.001% or two men, we can answer that. But think about how crazy that would be to start calculating that. Because, like. Up. Okay, men don't men don't care about height. So we let's, can run through some stats. Okay, it's so like let's go <laughs> let's go through some of the categories that like we would have to put in that delusion calculator mm. if it's the other for way around. For a girl, yeah. Oh, okay, so, we we can't even talk about that. So you're gonna want what? You're gonna want someone who's shorter than you. Okay, less than five ten. If less than five nine, if you're an average male. Okay. If you're a man, you see, don't. You see, don't. Yeah, it gets crazy. It gets tricky. We can't even talk about this. It gets bro. crazy. Like, what are you gonna do? Waist size, dress size, like, I, and that's where it gets offensive for some people. It's like, why do you care about a girl's weight? Why do you care about a girls? You feel okay, me? Like, okay, but then do I care about your salary? But we don't care. But girls aren't supposed to bring money to the table, and that's why we need to have the girls so we can discuss why are men held to a certain you know burden of performance when it comes to dating, and women can't really be talked about that and We're talked about like that. And I say this, again, I guess I was just getting off someone for making blanket statements. I'm making a blanket statement, too. If you like traditional values like that, then by all means, I like traditional values. Like, I want to be the provider. Like, I want to be that Ooh, for yeah. my relationship. So, like, to me, like, I've had conversations with my significant other that, like, it's just understood that there are going to be double standards. Like, yeah. it was, it was like a, it's a weird, it's a funny conversation to have, especially given some of the conversations that we've had behind closed doors about how we feel about double standards. But when you actually have to sit down with someone and they're like, no, like there is going to be a double standard. Like that shit's kind of crazy to me sometimes. But like, I also recognize that I kind of like it. Like that's the traditionalness of it. But at some point too, it's like, how far do we take it? And where do we take it? Yeah. And that's, that's between you and your partner and you know, however y'all want to help each other and grow. So, yeah, but where's the society? Do we take it? Where are we going? This Bro, society- honestly, I've noticed that I- I'm stopping. I'm starting to not give a fuck about society like that. Like, of course, I care because I'm in it. Yeah. But like, there's a certain point where it's like, okay, like, there's so many, you know, thoughts that you could think of, and so many things that that gets forced out for you to care about. Like, there's yeah. so many, you know, people that have problems that they're forcing you to care about. And it's like, bro, not only do I have my own issues, like I have issues with people that are in my immediate vicinity. Like, I can't care about the whole entire world. Like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not built for that. But, you know, hey. Not hate, but like misunderstanding is always gonna come around. Where it's like, oh, you ain't tapped in with this. Why don't you talk about this? Why don't you, you know, yeah. platform this? And it's just you can't win everything, bro. You know, yeah, you can't do everything. Shit's gonna slip through the cracks for sure. Yeah, but, but that, that was a great. Uh, we can for sure dive into that deeper next time. Yeah, later. save it for when we have a when we have a girl on the podcast. For sure, get deep into it. Yeah, absolutely. But um, the full topic, the real the, topic. Yep, yeah. we want to get down to the nitty gritty of accountability. And the difference between when you're holding your homies and your friends accountable and when you're holding just general public or just random people accountable and what that looks like. And also, if you want to dive into it even deeper, does it look different between you and your homies as like when y'all are males and you and your homegirls? And like, is there a dynamic that's different there? As how to hold someone accountable? It's so different. Um, Should it be different? Should it be different? I think I personally think it should be different yeah. depending on the individuals that you were dealing with because you can't approach everybody the same way. No, no shot. But the result needs to be the same, which is very hard to achieve if you're doing different type of methods to bring, you know, 
awareness to someone's mind that may not be aware of them not being accountable for something. Yeah, I think it's hard to try and get a girl to be accountable from a guy's perspective because you want like your natural urge is to speak like a male. You know what I mean? Like guys and dudes have a natural way of, you know, communicating with one another. It's a lot more straightforward, um, a lot less beating around the bush. But when it comes to girls, like they, like there's a reason that girls ask their close friends for advice on stuff that they know that they're going to agree with. Like, and guys do the same thing too. Like, do you feel like it's an echo chamber to a certain extent? Absolutely. I mean, and that's a full, that's a whole nother topic. That we and do you think, into. do you think that's because they'd rather not be confrontational with one another and stand in solidarity irregardless of bad behavior? Because th- this is one thing I've noticed, right? Me and you or whoever we're friends with, we can get at each other all live long day like it's nothing. There's no problem. And we understand at a baseline like this is not like a real issue. We're just letting each other know that, hey, we're noticing something in you and we, because we care about you, we're going to say something. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes when I approach these same conversations or moments of growth with the women in my life, they might take it as like, oh, like, you know, I'm not going to use the misogyny word, but that word has been thrown around a few times where it's like, okay, like if you're having any type of uh, constructive criticism or trying to be like, hey, like your behaviors here are like kind of out of line, out of pocket, they'll take it as, oh, it's a man trying to tell me something. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you should know better not to do that to a woman. It's like misogyny. It's like, why do people always jump there? I do not know. Because you, I'm, I clearly am talking to you because I care about you. Like, yeah. if I didn't give a fuck about you, then I wouldn't even care to have a conversation with you. No, and you know I think saying? I think that's the thing that makes it difficult for women is that I think so many... Okay, so let's address men first just because that's who we are. Like, yeah. men are just straightforward creatures. Like, just tell me what the fuck is up and then, like, we can keep it pushing. Like, you don't fuck with this? Okay, cool, whatever. Bada bing, bada boom. I agree with you. I don't agree with you, but I'm never going to hold a grudge against you unless you come from my character X, Y, Z. As long as you stay within those boundaries, dudes do not care. Oh, uh, hey, bro, like, I really just don't fuck with how you did that. Like, I really think that you should have operated this way instead of that way. Oh, okay, my fault, bro. Like, you know, I still think I might operate that way because this is how I see it, but I see where you're coming from and I respect that. Okay, cool. Dap it up. Keep it pushing. Yeah. I feel like in my experience and what I've seen, especially having friends that are girls and hearing what individuals will say to a, a male about another female and then watching the two females interact bro completely different what i hear from a female to a male myself and then what i see in their interaction are not the same thing the accountability that let's say woman a wants to hold woman b to and how she expresses that to me is completely different than how she expresses it to day and night and so it's like and i get that you know women have a way of like needing a little bit of a different tonality when discussing to them. And that's fine. And I'm not, there's no judgment here for that, but it is different. And it is like, it's weird to see sometimes, especially from my perspective, because like, I I do think it is an echo chamber sometimes. Like I've heard, and I can think of specific situations and specific examples where I've heard girls say like, or girls go to a specific other friend for advice because they know that they're going to get the the right answer back. Like they'll be like completely hypothetical. I know I said I have specific situations, but we'll use a hypothetical. Let's say, Oh my God, like I'm a girl. Trey's a girl. I'm specifically choosing Trey because I know Trey's also a hoe and I'm a hoe. So I want to know, I want to get validation for my hoe activities. <laughs> and so I'll yeah. go to Trey and be like, oh, Trey, like I was at the club this weekend and I made out with 30 dudes. And like, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, am I supposed to be feeling like this? Am I okay? You're a hoe too. So you're like, oh, get your shit on, girl. Like, you're just being a queen, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, okay. You have to know that hoe or not a hoe, whatever it is, like, if you are my real friend and you know that I have goals and that I want to be in a relationship and I want to hold myself to a certain standard, I want to be the right lady that I'm supposed to be that I grew up as, you hold me to that standard and you say, oh, like, what are you doing kissing 30 dudes like that? You know that's not what you're about. You know that's not what you're supposed to be doing. That's not what you're striving towards. Exactly. And that's, <clears throat> like, and that's fine. And I think the thing, the thing boils down to this when it comes to girls talking to girls. If you want to be a hoe, 
go be a hoe. No one gives a fuck. Don't come around. Enjoy to, it. Don't come around to other friends, though, or telling people that you want to act a certain way because then when you get held accountable to something, you get mad. Especially when it comes to guys and like guy friend to girlfriend. Like, and I know you've, I'm sure you've seen this before too, where it's like you got a friend, she wants a boyfriend, she wants to be in a relationship, she wants all the goodies that come. She's doing it. all the wrong things to get and there. And she's doing all the wrong things. She yeah. come to you telling you about it and then you give her a piece of your mind because you're like, you just told me that you want a boyfriend. And they think it's hating. And you're like, oh, you're just a hater. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't like me being me and doing what I want to do. It's like, oh, but you. They feel like we're putting them in a box and they feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're withholding them from their liberation. But it's not like that. It's like you said you wanted this. So I'm just trying to help you get there. Yeah. So that's it. It's, it's nothing more than that. It's if you want to be free, then be free. Like that's the, that's a different thing. But like when you make choices, certain decisions got to be made to get that choice. Yeah. I, I think the big thing for me is just. And you do the same thing for me. If I said I wanted a girlfriend, you, you wouldn't be yeah. like, yo, why are you messing with all these girls? Like it, it's the same shit. It, this is, I think I carried over the conversation from girls to what we were just talking about but this applies to everybody men to man man to man man to woman woman to woman woman to man whatever it is at the end of the day if you have set a standard for what it is that you're striving to be and you come to me because you messed up you did something different that you weren't wanting to do i'm gonna hold you accountable to what you told me you want to be if you don't want to be that and what you did aligns to the thing that you actually want to be then i'm not going to say anything if your goal in life is to catch a thousand bodies because that's what you want to do and you want to be the best porn star in the world. Yeah, I'll be your best wingman. All right, awesome. I'll great. I'll set you up. I'll ask you why you're not out every weekend going to find new practice yeah. or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like set your goals. Like it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. But you just gotta let you gotta let people know so that when they come at you, one, they know how to come at you correct because speaking as a man now speaking from man to woman if i'm coming at you to hold you accountable to something but now all of a sudden you switch up what you're actually trying to be because either you're lying and you are upset that i disagree with what happened and that i'm actually holding you accountable and so you want to switch what you want to be now to fit what you did incorrectly then it makes me feel like i'm an idiot and then like i don't want to hold you accountable and then like that's not people that i want to surround myself with and it's just it's not a good look i was actually a little um i was i was trying to figure out where you're going with the whole like if we're two girls and like you know if if you're a hoe and i'm a hoe but i kind of this is the right time to have those conversations because i feel like people don't really talk about that type of thing where it's like you know of course you want to support your friends of course you don't want to be like the opposition in any type of way but at the end of the day if you say you care about somebody and you say you want to be the best like um supporter that you can to your best friend or your whoever yeah you gotta make sure that you know your friend has a goal i'm gonna do everything i gotta do i'm gonna move hell and earth to get you to that goal i'm not gonna be the nicest person because sometimes guess what we all stumble we all fall we all want to like chill out and be lazy sometimes on our goals and ambitions yep. and we always need those people to keep us in check those checks and balances bro yeah. like that's so crucial and important and one thing i've noticed um as i've gotten older and maybe this is messed up of me, but I just, this is only because it's been reinforced to me. I try to put the same standards that I hold men on women. And I don't think I can do that because yeah. I don't know what, you know, women go through and why they make the choices they make. That's for them to decide. And if they want like to explain it to me, I'm down to have that conversation anytime. But when I would go into certain discussions with women trying to come from it as if, as if I'm speaking to a man and like trying to hold you to your word and like being hard about it and like dogmatic about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that was never the right approach Yeah, because not only does it come off, it gives the wrong taste. Yeah, It, it, it might come off as offensive, yeah. what I could see, but also I got to think about it. Like I, I, I don't move in life the same way they do, so I can't comprehend how they're, you know, dealing or coping with whatever they're dealing with. I know as a man, like, I can just, like you like you said earlier, we're straight to the point, bro. Like, if you're on bullshit, we we, we calling you out on that. And we're going to do the best thing that we can do to make sure that you get to where you need to. And when when it comes to your word and when it comes to being responsible and holding it down, like, as a man, like, that's everything for us. If yeah. we don't have that, you're, like, nothing, bro. I'm going to yeah. be honest, like, if you don't have a backbone as a fucking man, bro, you ain't shit, bro. But I'm not saying that women don't have a backbone or nothing. I'm just saying, like, 
I can't put that same judgment on women that I do on men. It's different. I'm harder on men on purpose because as a man, if not us, then who else? Yeah. Like, if no one is, you know, set on, you know, being, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but basically, <laughs> you need to have something that you hold and that you stand on. And if you're flimsy and wishy-washy on everything, then I just can't respect it, bro. But, yeah. and I don't want to put that on women at all because I don't understand fully. And that's why I think we do need to have those conversations with women on the podcast so they can better explain. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> I used to look up why women lie sometimes, bro. Like I remember you telling me that. Yeah, like it was it was it was a point where it was pretty bad. Yeah. Because they, you know, to me at the time it was like you don't have to lie about that stuff. Like it's, yeah. it's small things where it's like, it's why would you lie about that? Yeah. And of course, like I'm gonna probably say something about it, like, yo, like you ain't gotta lie and try to hold you accountable, but at the same time, like it's a lack of understanding on my point. So that's why I like to talk with him about it. Even though I don't agree with the behavior, I don't. <laughs> I don't agree with the behavior. I'm just saying like I do you know, think it is worth a conversation. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's definitely hard going from one gender to the other because there are certain ways that people talk about things. Like, and there are certain ways that the two genders address one another. And it's like, you have, it's like almost speaking a different language. Like you have to translate what boy man wants to say into what a woman needs to hear you know because what you want to say and what you need to say can be carried across it's just so different and put so different going from men to woman woman from woman to man that it's like it's literally hard like it is just hard to do because it just doesn't it just doesn't compute if you say it like a man like if i say something i don't know like, hey, remember you said that you were going to stop doing that? It's like, now nah, I'm just a hater. Like, mm -hmm. And it's just like, you have to find the right way. It's like, oh, like, remember you said that you didn't want to do that anymore? Because remember that one time? You got to give, like, full examples of, like, mm -hmm. all this Some, kind of Yeah, stuff. sometimes you got to walk on eggshells and tiptoe, but yeah. Yeah, and it's like, and that's fine, and it is what it is. And, you know, treat everyone how they need to be treated because each individual needs to be talked to differently. Like, and that goes from woman to woman, man to man. Like, the way I talk to you is probably going to be different than the way I talk to whoever. And so it's, it's, it's such a sticky situation. I mean, at the end of the day, it all comes down to who you want to surround yourself with. Because there's also two types of accountability. There's accountability of doing it because you want to hold your friend to their standard. And there's also accountability to where you need to hold yourself to a standard of who you surround yourself with. Because... Say you do something and I don't agree with it because of my own personal morals. If I come at you and I'm discussing that with you, that's not me trying to hold you to a standard. That's me holding myself to a standard of who I surround myself with. Whereas if you do something and I know that doesn't align with your morals, then I'm coming at you trying to help you. And it's just different. You need to make sure you know where you're coming from because that's going to change the dynamic of the conversation. Thousand percent. Um. I, I do think that when it comes to, like, the world versus your homies, I do think we do pay more attention to our friends, and we try to give them as much leeway and bail as we can because, of course, like, we, we have an affinity for our friends. We like our friends, of course. It's easy to just tell someone, like, at, at a general baseline that you don't know, like, hey, like, you fucking up. Like, fuck your feelings, whatever. You need <laughs> you need to be better. Yeah. But, like, when it comes to your friends, you do want to, like, make sure you're not touching too many pressurized pressure points for them where they feel like, you know, the point of me holding you accountable is lost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you don't want to overstep your brand to a point where it's like, all right, at this point, it's like, you're not even trying to help me. You're just, like, talking shit on me at this point. Yeah. You never want to get there. But at the same time, I think what you said is really smart. Like, you have to, you have to phrase it in a certain way where it's like, hey, you appointed me this position. Correct. And I'm going to fulfill this position to the best of my abilities because I care about you. Yeah. And I think that is the best way to go about it and if at that point they still can't understand where you're coming from then i think you need to reassess completely like the friendship yeah absolutely so yeah i think here's a hypothetical and you know i think we've seen some of this and no one's getting called out for this and i've seen it multiple times so it can't pinpoint it to nobody but like especially when it comes to men and i know and we can 
I'm, I'm going to say this part, just the topic. If we've talked about saying this in the podcast before, whether or not you want to keep it, we can cut it from here. Um, men, especially men, more so than women, cheating. Mm. Holding men to holding men to that kind of Oh, yeah, I got something for that. Go ahead. Yeah, because, mm. and I mean, I'm going to let you go, but just to set the stage for it, we all know that the social community view on the two genders is that men cheat more than women consensus yeah consent that's a consensus opinion and with that consensus opinion comes the fact that since so many men cheat friends around those men will hide it for it or like won't say anything about it they'll be like accomplices to the cheat correct yeah what's your opinion on that I think Before it's bullshit. I, yeah. I, I think it's bullshit, honestly, because I'll give you a prime example, bro. I'm not going to say no names, but I had a homie with his girl. I found out, bro, cheat on her. And, of course, like, you know, as some men do, they're not going to tell their girl why they cheated. Yeah. And I saw how devastated the girl was, not even having an explanation as to why yeah. they couldn't be together. And... I was really hard on my homie for it. I said, hey, bro, like, we don't fucking do that. Like, it's bullshit. Like, what you did to that girl is fucked up. I was on his head so so hard, pause, that literally, like, so we had a homegirl that knew the situation, too. Like, she was telling me to chill out on him. Talking yeah. about, hey, like, like he fucked up. Like, it's okay, Trey. Like, you feel me? Like, he, he, he knows that he did wrong. And I was like, nah, fuck that. Like, cause this is what we get pinned for. Just coming out at, with a dick, bro. Like being looking like this with a dick, bro. Of course they're going to assume we cheating. And that's why I think it's really fucked up. Cause you, you just re, uh, reinstating a fucking fucked up stereotype that they already think about us. Yeah. And also not only that, somebody, somebody's crushed from this, bro. Yeah. On bullshit. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of that person. And I'm not going to support that. And I'm, I'm a, that's for anybody out there. Like if you cheating, bro, just don't tell me. Because I'm not going to yeah, be in your corner, me. bro. I'm not going to, like, spread your business, of course. I'm going to mind my business. But I'm not going to, like, really help you out and be like, oh, no, nah, he wasn't over there. Girl, you know he loves you. Oh, stop playing. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But that's me, though. So yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it's right as within myself. Because, number one, if y'all ever caught me cheating, you know y'all have the right. First off, I would never try to cheat. But if y'all ever caught me cheating, do not stand by me, bro. Yeah. Hold me accountable, bro. Yeah. It's a it's such a hard topic, especially when it's like your people, if they do it. Because a situation like that is it involves two people. Now, if holding someone accountable when it's something that they did and affected them and them only is a lot easier than when it involves someone else. Because there's an easy way to write the shit when it's one person. You you just fix it internally. You know what I mean? When you're dealing with something like cheating, the right like we all can agree that riding the ship is coming clean. You know, like that is the right thing to do. If you slip up and cheat, you face the music of what you did, and you just, and you do what you gotta do. As a homie, like there are certain boundaries that you just can't cross, regardless. And as much as I want to hold someone accountable, and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let a homie like I would let anyone hear it from me for a minute before I let them off the hook for that. And I probably wouldn't ever even look at them the same, cause like that's just just not cool. And yeah. so, but like the right thing to do is you tell the girl. But which, as a, which a lot of niggas don't do, and which pisses me off, cause I'm like, bro, but can you? Like, do you? Are you supposed to? Because think about this, bro. If I cheated, I'm telling her. Like, what? No, no, no. I'm saying as a homie. Like, oh, no, you don't. No, nah, that's not. Yeah, that's saying? not a balance. No, nah, you you can't tell her. You can tell your homie who did it. To hey, bro. Her. As a man, do like, go tell you. Like, what? Yeah. But you as a homie can't. No, you can't do that. Yeah. It's just, that's such a hard situation. Because, like, that stuff, ooh, that stuff can, like, I can ruin friendships and obviously the relationship itself because so, so many people just don't align with that kind of bullshit. Like, it's just, excuse me, it's just gross behavior. Like, like if you, I just, if you can't help yourself, bro, just leave, bro. Like, if you really can't do, like, if you can't handle yourself, just leave. Like, there is no point in being 
in that situation. But that's especially with homies, like that stuff it's like it shouldn't be hard. But like when you think about it and like it's just like it's just such a fucked up situation to see homies do that and that especially I've seen so many people encourage it, bro. Like we've seen it, bro. And like I know you know what I'm talking about when I start talking about this. Like dudes I've I've seen conversations of guys giving other guys tips and tricks on how to cheat better and not get caught. I've seen it. Yes. That's nuts. That is insane. I think the only that shouldn't be used for relationships. If you want to know how to keep your if, let, let's say you're single and you yeah. want to keep your business from other people that you're seeing because you and you you express that you're single to other people, yeah. Then you could use that type of you well, feel me? of course. But like in a relationship, it's crazy. But the conversation yeah. that was had yeah, was yeah, not facts, that. Facts. But and it's just like my thing is is like, and you if people know they're doing it wrong. Bro. I look I look at those that's, people. Yeah, that's crazy. I look at those people. I'm like, wow. Especially the person who's initiating the conversation or asking for the tips and tricks. I'm like, wow. You're really okay with your closest people when you say, oh, like, I got to figure out how to hide that I'm talking to whoop-de-whoop. How do I do that? And the response of your so-called homies to be, oh, well, you got to do this, this, and this, instead of, bro, what the fuck are you thinking trying to hide it, bro? Like, just don't, just don't do I, that. I can tell you. Bro, like, that's nuts. They're not thinking about being the best version of themselves, or they think that the best version of themselves requires this. Because, bro, there's no way that you think that you're doing right by doing that, bro. There's no way. Unless you think that it's within your power and your right to do so. Some people have normalized it so much, bro. Because think about it, bro. And I think it's like a, it becomes a pop culture thing, especially at the highest level of celebrities and stuff. Like, think about how, many, how often those people cheat. Bro, that shit's normal, bro. Yeah. How many people do you know that haven't? How many people can you honestly say that you know have not been cheated on? Because I, I can Men or women? Anyone. I can't think of anybody. Like off that the hasn't top, been cheated on? That have not been cheated on. I can't think of a single person. Um, I know some people from high school that I think have not been cheated on. But I, that's that's me thinking. I don't really know. But like... Yes, yeah, it's slim. It's slim. It's not the majority. It's not the majority, bro. And that's just nuts to me that it is so normalized. And I just feel like you just got to... When it comes to the accountability thing, bro, to bring it back, you just got to know who you're surrounding yourself with and surround yourself with the right people if you want to go in a certain direction. If you want to go beyond bullshit and you want people to hold you accountable to being on bullshit, that's fucking fine. But just be honest with yourself. Like, no one has a problem with you being on bullshit as long as you're honest about the fact that you want to be on bullshit. Yeah, and some people genuinely don't want more from themselves. I've, I've come to notice that, too. And that's fine. Like, I'll give you and me as an example. What did it take you to, to look yourself in the mirror and be like, you know what? What I'm doing is not enough. I need to, you know, up my level of being the best version of myself. I need to, you know, negate all these, not completely negate it, but like I need to be on a path to up in myself as an individual for who I really want to be. What did it take? Yeah. Like, did it take a conscious decision that you have to repetitively think about on a daily basis? No, bro. I just came out the womb like that. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my, my bad. My bro, bad. Rock. Sorry, I don't want to sound like that. came out like Hancock, just had the powers and shit. No, it's like one of those things, bro, where it's like, and th and this is maybe why it's hard for, like, and I learn this more and more every day, the more I talk to new people or same people and I get more of an understanding. People are just different. People operate different. People come up different. People have different understandings of things. And you cannot, the worst thing you can do in this life, especially when it comes to operating with other people, especially in the space of accountability, is assuming they have the same values as you. Yep. I come from a place where consistently being the better version of yourself is assumed. Like That was something that I grew up in a household where it was assumed that you were going to be striving for that. Whether you were starting from going from an F to just trying to get Ds or whether you were going from getting Bs to trying to get As regardless of what it was there was always an assumption that you were supposed to do that so when i come out into the more adult world and you really start seeing other people's perspectives you really start to recognize that like people are not built like, people are not wired that way you know and each person is such an individual that they're not always going to be wired the same way and that's fine that's perfectly fine i don't like it's no no slight to nobody yeah the opposite 
uh, perspective. I mean, within my immediately within my immediate family, of course, like you know, you have to come correct or else you know you finna get straightened out. But <laughs> but when I walk outside of my house, mm-hmm. different niggas was on bullshit. It was no like, hey, let's make sure we're being the men of the future. It was none of that. It's yo, where where the where the, where the joints at, bro? Yeah. Oh, where where the, where the link ups at, bro? Like it was on bullshit. Like we was trying to do shit way too early. Like it it was just a bunch of degeneracy, honestly. And I, bro, in my mind, that was it. Like yeah. that's all that I was on that too. Like fuck it. Like we I'm I'm with the rest of the crowd. Like I'm doing it too. Like fuck it. We all in this shit together. But it came to a point in my life where, um, I said to myself, you know what? What I really want to be is not what I'm seeing. And yeah. so I had to make a conscious decision to be like, you know what? Yeah, y'all could do that. Cool. Y'all could keep stepping. Y'all could keep drinking. Y'all could keep doing all this shit. That's not going to help me to be the person that I really need to be at the end of the day. And I think that does come from my foundation, you know, with my family. Because if I didn't have my foundation with my family, I probably would have still been on bullshit. A thousand percent, I would still be on bullshit. Yeah. A thousand percent. Because, bro, like, the allure of just doing what's easy and fun and free is just, it's always there. And it's hard to let go of that and just say, you know what, I'm going to hone in on doing something that's difficult, bro. Yeah. And that kind of ties into the fucking quote, bro. Like, a lot of people would rather be on bullshit and, like, try to make it that way than really just, you know, take it day by day and really hone in on themselves to be the the best. Yeah. I think... A problem, especially with our age demographic, and this is, I think we're getting a little bit far away from accountability, which is fine. Yeah, and we're true, just true. going with the conversation flow. But um, part of the problem with our age demographic is that there's a lot of people who want to be quote unquote free spirits while they're still young. And so you have a lot of people in our age graphic that are, that have dreams and aspirations of, as the quote says, succeeding or as or they want to succeed with honor but are so focused on seizing the moment of being young and being a free will that they just throw it all to the side and they're like oh don't worry i'll just put it together when it later in the like later fuck no baby and it's just like i do that i i just i look at some of those people i'm just like like, I get it. I can see where you're coming from. Like, all right, yeah, you want to have fun while you're young. You know, you only have this amount of energy, this amount of vibrance for so long. And you want to take advantage of it. But at the same time, it's like some of these people aren't simultaneously taking steps to get to those other places that they want to get to as well. And so I think that there's like this epidemic. And maybe it's maybe it's because of COVID, too. Like, And it might be because of COVID because of people being locked in for so long. That's a long. good one. That's a good one. That people are really just trying to take in every moment and do whatever the fuck they want to do. Which is, fu- again, none of this is judgment. Do what the fuck you want to do. Just be honest with yourself. So it's just like these people are just doing all this bullshit, but then want to come online and talk about, oh, yeah, I'm trying to do this, this, this. Put it on social media. And then it's like you see them in real life. And it's like, bro, you haven't done shit to get to where you want to go. Like, you've been talking about You want to write a book for the last four years, but every Saturday and Friday, Saturday night, you're out at the club. Okay. How many pages of that book have you wrote? And you ain't getting no more inspiration than the last time you went to the club. (laughs) Bro. (laughs) So it's like, yeah. And it's like, you just got to really take it in and just hold yourself accountable. If you can write four pages before you step out, my guy, step out, celebrate every four pages. Like no one gives a fuck. But it's like, there are so many excuses. You know what? I think the best example, and I know I'm starting to rant, ramble, so I'll... No, go ahead, bro. It's free. Go ahead. The best ex- the best example I've seen of this is gym, gym goers. New gym goers. People who want to lose weight. The new year when it comes around? New year's resolution, yep. bro. They they have the audacity to write this shit down, too. Oh, I'm going to be in the gym every week. Hilarious. Yeah. And it's like, I get it. Me, I think I can speak for both of us. Me and you are blessed to be in a mindset where it just is easy for us to get up and get to the gym. And I think that is a blessed mindset. And I recognize that that is a blessed mindset. And that not everyone has that same mindset. But when I see these people who are like, oh, I got these gym goals. And I want to I wanna lose 20 pounds. But will... 
like down 20 beers and eat a house and like all this shit. I'm like, you don't even have to work out, but just make a, like you, every time you go for some of these things, like there's a fork in the road and some people are so locked into being in the moment and just give zero fucks about what happens and what the cause, what the causality of the situation is that they're just like, yep, I see a donut right now. And right now I know it will taste good. So I'm going to eat it right now. No fucks given about what they said that they wanted to do. But I guarantee you, if you say something to them, why are you always on my back? Why? why? Okay, cool. That's fine. If you want to Mm -hmm. eat like that, don't fucking tell me you want to lose 20 pounds. I don't go fuck. If you don't lose 20 pounds, who gives a fuck? Rock on. That's, That's body positivity. That is absolutely body positivity. If you want if you want to just live how you want to live and you want to eat whatever the fuck you want to eat, say that. Be honest about it. Yeah. But do not come online. Do not come to me. Do not come to Trey. Do not come to people, friends of yours, and say, I want to lose X amount of weight. And then get upset when Yeah, you probably shouldn't walk you probably shouldn't drink that beer. Or you should probably have a water now instead. Or you probably shouldn't eat that next donut. You, yeah, you, you don't need that third, third slice of cake, bro. Yeah. Like, you don't need that. Or you don't need another slice of pizza. <clears throat> like, or you don't need pizza tonight. You can get like pasta instead. That's better for you. Like, it's stuff like that where... And then it, it's the anger that people get when you call them out on that stuff that makes me mad. I'm going to be honest, bro. I hope... Bro, honestly, if you get mad, that might just indicate to me that you're not built for it. You're not, you're not built for your own progress. Yeah. Because, bro, your aspirations are way longer than what you can actually do within yourself. Yeah. Like, you could think a lot, but you ain't doing a lot. So, I mean, and you taught me that. I feel like I have great ideas. whoop de doo <laughs> Like, if I don't put that shit to action, what the fuck does it mean then? Yeah. I might as well call it a dream. That's why we're doing <laughs> the podcast. Point. Exactly. But that, this, it, great it's a great example of our accountability for one another. This podcast is an example of me holding Trey accountable to putting an idea into action and into fruition. Because true, and like I've told Trey, and this is part of our story as a podcast. I am all for supporting the homies. I have to know you actually want to do it before I start supporting. Trey had an idea. All right, do something about it. I'll be right there next to you. He does something about it, bada bing, bada boom, we have a podcast. We hear. It's that simple for, I think that comes back down to the guy thing. Like that's how guys operate is it's, it can be that simple. Do you have an idea? Do you, is there something that you want to achieve in life? Did you tell me you want to achieve that thing? Do you need my help? Yes or no? Yes. Cool. What do you need? But I also need to make sure. And then we're holding each other accountable along the way. Okay. Kieran's editing the video. Trey's texting me. Did you did you edit the video? Are you ready to post? Did you get everything ready to post? I'm texting Trey. Is there a topic ready? Do we have a topic? Like, what's the topic for the podcast? What time are you available to come over? And it's like all this kind of stuff. It's just checks and balances that I think every individual needs someone like that in their life. Now, obviously, you don't have to pursue a venture that's a podcast, but whatever it is that you want to achieve in life, weight, money, job, boyfriend relationship whatever the fuck it is that you want to do you need to have someone in your corner that is always going to tell you how it is and it's going to stick by your side for that you can have your yes men too and that's fine if you want to hear yes all the time you can have them but you need to make sure that if you want to have the most successful life possible you need someone to tell you when you're fucking up yeah and you don't need a bunch of people telling you that you're fucking up because then you might just be fucking you won't, you might not even go for your dreams honestly. now you might actually have haters <laughs> yeah like if everybody's saying nah i don't do it then yeah take it as you as you will but yeah that's a fact bro um that kind of talked about something i did want to talk about later but we kind of already talked about it some you know it's about the moments that you know that we've actively decided to go from you know being a boy to trying to become a a, a man essentially and for me it took a lot of failure it took a lot of realizations it took a lot of moments by myself it took a lot of you know just thoughts yeah. and what do these thoughts mean and how do i bring them to life you yeah know? because it's hard honestly bro it's, it's really hard like like no bullshit it's really hard so like that's why i kind of give some people leeway when they bullshit <laughs> 
Yeah. But like I probably shouldn't, but then I probably should because we're all people. Then they about that. Like, if you say you want to do something, bro, like that is you got to do that, bro. And if you don't, if you're not ready for it, like you said, just say you're not ready for it. It's cool. Take your time, bro. Get your space. Get your mental. All that. Whatever. Yeah. Don't give me expectations. Yep. But if you say, hey, like this is my angle, and you don't have no type of steps to get there, bro, then what are we doing? Yeah. So. I think that encapsulates everything. So that was well said. And we'll probably dive into some more of these conversations that we had today, like in other topics, you know, yeah. subtopics. But that was just the gist of like, you know, accountability. Yeah. And, and self-accountability. It too. definitely went into a, a larger conversation. I'm sure some of those subtopics we'll discuss later. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, each individual person outlines what they want for themselves. If you want something and you want someone to hold you accountable, go for it. If you don't, don't. It, it really is that simple. And also, and the, the best thing I can tell you to do is start with yourself. Hold yourself accountable at all times, yeah. bro. Because let's say your support system is not there for whatever reason. They falter. Then you, your plans just go to shit. No. Yeah. You need to have a, a good foundation within yourself to say, you know what? Through hella high water, I'm getting this shit done. Of course, I'm going to take all the help I can get because mm -hmm. you're going to need help in life. You can never do it by yourself fully, but you need to be, have yourself in those moments where you can, like, you know, sustain enough to make it through and push through. So that's what I got for that. Um, do you have any more thoughts on it? No, nah, that's really it, man. I feel like I rambled a little bit, but. It was all productive in my opinion, so fuck it. Appreciate it. Yeah, so I mean. Again, I'd, I can only reiterate what Trey said. I think that's the most important part to take from this conversation. Work on yourself first. Once you can hold yourself accountable, then you can start bringing other people in. And before we go, I do have a challenge to the audience. I haven't had one of these in a minute, but whatever this is for you, that one uncomfortable thing that you've been dreading to do that you have not done yet, whether that's to put yourself out there in a certain light or start writing that book yep. or going to the whatever it is, do that thing this week at least one time. Take a step. Take one step. Put your little baby toe in the water, bro. Just do that. And guess what? By week two, do it two times. Yep. And see where you are at the end of three months. Yeah. See if you get into a place where, yes, you might still be uncomfortable. But let's say if you're, if you're able to deal with it more than you were when you first started. And look where you are. Look where you were before you started to do it and see where you are at the end of it. And hopefully it works out. Because I've had to do that, and I'm going to continue to do that. Because there's still things I'm com uncomfortable doing, but I got to put myself out there and put myself through the fire. So I would challenge all of y'all to do that. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to wrap it up with the mental health check? Yeah. So um, mentally, um, I'm doing all right. On a scale of 1 to 30, I'd probably say like a 20. Um, I'm just in like an airplane mode where I'm just like on autopilot yeah. type shit. I'm just trying to, you know, day to day, I'm working on stuff, so. Yeah, I can't complain too much. And um, yeah, what about you? I'd probably say I'm right there. I'd probably put a little bit lower, like a 17, just because I'm, I'm just looking for a new job, and that's just stressful. I facts, mean, that's facts. all it is. Yeah. Tell your boss to fucking email me back, bro. Fucking ghost yeah. me. I mean, she ghosted us too, nigga. That's right. <laughs> she ain't come by the center yet. So, I mean, but. Uh, crazy. It, yeah, it is crazy. But yeah, that's, I mean. There's always stress of a new job and everything else that follows with not having a job. So, but it is what it is. True. Pushing through. Life is still good. Blessed to be in the situation I am, regardless of that. And I'm sure I'll make it out on the other side at some point. Yes, sir. That's what we love to hear. But check in with your people is always, always keep doing that. Check in with your homeboys, your homegirls, your family, your mom, your dog, your cat, your sister, whatever. <laughs> um, but we'd like to appreciate y'all for viewing wherever y'all viewing us from. Like I said before, please help out the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, notification bell, all that. It'd be much appreciated. And I hope you have a good rest of y'all day. But other than that, we have been the Real River Podcast. And to the solid homies out there, stay off the hub, man. Please, please stay off the hub. I beg y'all. <laughs> Avoid the baddies and stop paying for things that other men know to be free. We have been the Real Weaver Podcast, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>